Okay, this section again, this is uh, domain three, security architecture and engineering section, assess and mitigate vulnerabilities in a web-based systems, domain three, section six. Okay, again, we're gonna focus on this objective, it's 3.6, and it is assess and mitigate vulnerabilities in web-based systems. Uh, this is a very interesting part as well. The, all these CISSP aspects, they're funny how they all kind of work together. Uh, and it's what a great product it is as far as from a CISSP standpoint on, on understanding what you need to learn. Um, and I'd say great, great product on reduce that risk. Yeah, it is pretty awesome. But ISC Squared really put out a good, uh, complete understanding of the uh, CISSP. So it's, it's really pretty amazing since a lot of the stuff I use on a daily basis. Okay, so as we're dealing with uh, vulnerabilities within web-based systems, this is something to consider is that you're going to be dealing with this on uh, actually more and more as time goes on, especially as a CISSP and as a cybersecurity professional, you are going to deal with web-based systems uh, all the time, right? Substantially is not the right word, but I was going to use some really cool English, but it didn't work out so well. Um, but bottom line is that there's web-based systems, they continue to grow, and we're seeing it all the time. I mean, anybody that's in this world knows that it's it's going to be more and more web-based or out of a browser-based systems. So therefore, you need to understand what are the vulnerabilities that are associated with these web-based systems. Now, you have a cloud-based option, which is your serverless piece. This is the use, utilizing AWS, and uh, instead of using an actual server to run processes, you're using pieces of a server using just to basically run uh, little applets or little applets at the right word, but little uh, serverless integration where it's just using a fraction of a server to run an operation versus the entire thing. Um, and you'll see that with, within AWS in the cloud environment. It's just pretty amazing where it's growing. Now it's more complex with greater integration and you're going to now have with APIs, uh, API calls that are a that are associated with web-based integrations, it's just amazing what's happening within the environment. And so therefore, as it gets becomes more and more complex, it's just something that you're gonna have to consider and keep within your uh, understanding of the web. Now there's a great project out there called the Open Web Application Security Project, otherwise known as OWASP. And this is a nonprofit that's put out there on how should you do development and how should you manage the web applications and security around those. And I highly recommend that if you are a CISSP or a cybersecurity professional that's learning for your CISSP, you need to focus on going to the OWASP and understanding a lot of the security controls that they have. Especially as you have, if you have developers that are working for you, they need to understand what is in OWASP and, and what should they do to be a secure development. Um, it's an open source community and people provide content around that. Um, but I highly, I've, I've passed that on to my developers as well. Uh, it's a very good place for you to get some really good knowledge. So again, check it out, OWASP. Now, Web Application Security Testing Cheat Sheet. They have a really cool cheat sheet that I will have in uh, the links at the end of this section. Um, it's also a great place to start when you're dealing with your web application. It talks about what are the main things you need to consider when developing a web application. Now there's the top 10 risks that they put out there and this does get updated every single year. I will say it stays pretty consistent because <laughs> the, the top three especially are very, very consistent. Um, but it's, it's a good update each year of some of the things that happen. I shouldn't say that the top, the last seven stay very consistent. The top three will, will change a little bit, but for the most part, uh, they are really, really, it's a really, really good analogy, or I should say summary of everything that deals with um, the CISP and security world. Um, as far as from a different example of what they have available on the OWASP, obviously SQL injection, you'll see a lot of that. And why is that such a big deal? Well, guess what? Most databases sit behind a CMS or a web front end, and therefore they are populated with the data. And since they're populated with the data, where does data reside? It resides there. What do people go after if they're attacking a system? The data. That's usually what they want. They either want to deny access or they want to steal the data. Uh, there's XML exploitation, uh, various forms of injection, and cross-site scripting. That's been a goodie, but uh, it's been around forever. So uh, those are just some ideas, some of the top four that they have right now in OWASP. Uh, but you'll see real quickly that if you do some key things within your environment to protect it, uh, as it relates to OWASP, you'll be surprised how much you can actually impart to your development world that will substantially reduce your risk, reduce your cyber risk uh, to, to your company. So something to consider around OWASP. 
Now, as we get into SQL injection, one of the things to consider that it's, again, is people trying to gain access to the SQL database, and they will inject code in an input field. So you have an input field in your web browser, and they have a an input field that you want them to put in their name, their social security number. Well, maybe not social security number, but depends. Uh, put some information in it. But these guys, these these honorary people that are the hackers, they decide they want to try something different. Well, let's see. Well, let's put some code in this. Maybe let's put in uh, some sort of JavaScript that could run in there. And they're waiting to see for an unexpected data return or potential access to the database. This can be mitigated, and it just changes by much of it comes down to is changing what your field parameters are so that it doesn't accept this arbitrary code just dropped in the field. It's requiring that you have some sort of um, limiters put in place, right? Now, if you leave that just unopened unop up, there, people are going to stick stuff in it that doesn't belong there. So as a, as a developer, it's imperative that you put the right level of parameters around your input fields. Uh, so again, it comes down to various input fields, incorporate limits on the fields. We talked about that. And then account privileges. Yes, like everything comes back to is account privileges. But why does this become a problem? Because it's hard. It's not the easiest thing to do. And so therefore, and many times it's better to, you got a tight development cycle, you got to get it done. And I've noticed this even with the development team that I've worked with in the past. Again, they follow sprint cycles and they're working on these specific development stories. But what ends up happening is security becomes a secondary and they and or they don't really totally understand it. So what, what do we do as humans when we don't understand something? We ignore it. Yeah, that works out really, really well. Um, but again, those are the things that you can do to protect against a SQL injection. Now, as you're dealing with vulnerabilities, and we'll talk about this throughout the uh, CISSP training, but there's a resource for vulnerabilities that you can find out if you're trying to understand what is vulnerable, what isn't. Now, many of you that are watching this that may be from a CISSP background or from a security background may know this already. However, many people struggle with this. I was actually talking to a CIO the other day, and he, he was aware of it, but he couldn't remember where it was. So as a security professional, you're going to have to be able to convey this to senior leaders. Uh, where does all of this reside and what does it mean? And you have to do it in a layman's term so that they actually understand what you're saying. You're not just saying geek speak and they don't have a clue with what you're trying to say. So imperative. You almost need to do something in my training about how should you properly talk to senior leaders? Hey, that's a great one. I'll do that. I can do a podcast off of that. Huh. Anyway, those are some really good points around resources for vulnerabilities. Now. Actually, I've never said it yet. Anyway, National Vulnerability for Database. Squirrel, sorry, got distracted. Um, there's the National Vulnerability Database, which is available, NVD, and that has all the vulnerabilities that are, you, you will find that are released on a daily basis. Um, and as if you have, for example, Eternal Blue, when it came out and some of the vulnerabilities that were around that, uh, some ransomware, different aspects around that, all of those different variants will be put in this NVD. Now, there's also scanning tools that you can use to scan your front end web browsers. And this is, uh, they're free and there's paid, depends upon which ones you want to use. OWASP has a really good listing of free and paid. Now, I should say they have a free scanner that they use. It's really pretty good. Uh, and then they also have a list of paid providers as well. So there's different scanning tools that you can utilize for your company. Uh, the OWASP vulnerability scanner, I, I agree. I think it's a really good place to start, especially if you're trying to get some level of understanding around the vulnerabilities that are associated with your web presence. Um, they have a web application vulnerability scanner evaluation project, WAVSEP, because you've got to have an acronym. If you don't have an acronym, you ain't cool. That's what that's that's my thought process but it's probably like most things that i believe is pretty flawed um but anyway that's that is their vulnerability scanner and then they have the paid versions as well on owasp all right so these are the references for this section section uh that is a part of the i think it's section six yeah i believe section six uh these are the references isc training study guide april 2018 and the national vulnerability database um, actually, I thought I had OWASP on here, but that's okay. You can just go check it out. Google OWASP and you will find it. It will help you in your plans for uh, securing your environment. All right, let's move on to the next section.